Today on The Grid, we're talking about our and your dream travel photography locations. The real man, no flash in the pan, he knows how to scan, he's got a Florida tan, he eats lots of brands, he has friends in Iran, the rocket man Kuna is here. We've got some familiar giveaways and it all starts in just 60 seconds. The Grid is brought right. to you by yes, ProPhoto, the light shaping company. Check out the ProPhoto B1X, power in all the right places. Go to ProPhoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to Platypod.com. Open mic. Hey, oh, open mic. Whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. <laughs> As you can tell, I wasn't... <laughs> Quite, quite ready there, but uh, let's try it again. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Grids. <laughs> Scott Kelby here, joined by the real Rocket Man Can Ham, Mr. Kuna. Hey, Scott. We really tightened up that intro, so we got to be on, got to be on the ball on that one. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It, it was yeah. It's a long. It's a long one. Trying to get right into the show. Boom. We're into the show. Yeah. Uh, we are. Uh, we're here uh, at our set uh, live. Uh, we we missed you guys last week, uh, but we did the landscape conference last Tuesday and Wednesday. We started yeah. off Monday. It it rocked. Awesome. It yeah. was great. People we had more it. than 1,400 photographers from all over uh, joining us for the two-day event, and we just we just had a ball. It was really really a lot of fun. We had a good group of, of people watching and great questions, a lot of interaction. It was just a a really really fun educational time. Uh, the the uh, what do you call it? The survey data from people that attended. Oh, I loved it. Loved it. Like it was like through the there roof. Were, so there were a few was, people. I think there was three people. There were three people that thought said, it was the worst no, thing that had ever been ever. presented by humans. Fourteen hundred <laughs> But thirteen hundred and ninety seven or whatever it yeah. was loved it. Yeah. And then three people wanted us to die. I think that their I think their exact <laughs> words were, I can't believe that you guys did this, you should die, I think was was that yeah. the exact comment? No, I think it was Maybe a little harsher. Yeah, it was a little harsher than that. But anyway, uh, we're so glad you guys are Welcome here to joining us. And, uh, <laughs> and and thanks for for every. I gotta move over, don't I? I gotta go. Nope, not that way. That way. Okay, there we go. There we go. Uh, thanks to everybody that attended the conference. We're gonna be making an announcement on our next uh, online conference coming up. We've got a whoo, got a good one. It's gonna be pretty sweet. But um, we'll probably we'll be announcing it shortly. Uh, no, we won't we'll probably be announcing it shortly. We will we'll be, be announcing, announcing it, shortly, it shortly, so stick around for that. But uh, we had such a good time. Those things are so much fun. And I don't know, Eric, if you're if you like just checking your phone or looking at Facebook at yep. any time, just they caught yep. you on yep. camera. Yep. They, they caught did. you, Eric. They caught you on your they phone. Did. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting hit up by people at work saying, "Hey, we got stuff ready." <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it's good when people have stuff have work, work ready. All right. So what are we doing today? Today we are talking about our, your, our combined dream travel photography locations, because hopefully by next year, we'll be able to hit some of these places. So um, I, I really, I, I have, I made up a list. I made up a list. I don't know what you did, Eric, but here's what I did. I did, I did some, some spots that I've been to that I would highly recommend to everybody. Mm -hmm. I did the dream spots that I have not been yet that I, that I would love to go, that I feel like would be good photographic, you know, I'm, I'm not... Right. I'm pretty sure they're going to be good. But then I also have one, two, three, five cities that should be photographically awesome. But not only did I not do well there, I haven't seen a bunch of other photos that I really felt did. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, and there are well, places where I, think, I, I mentioned We, we talked a little bit about this, and I think our lists are going to differ a little bit, you know, because, yeah. um, you know, um, mine probably are going to be more centered around what, my interests and stuff are, you know. Okay, so, uh, so it's like, going to be a little bit you? more towards landscape. Okay, here's, here's what it's probably going to be a little Eric's bit towards, go. towards Eric's, Milky Eric's Way. Eric's list will be <laughs> Cape Canaveral, Houston, <laughs> the SpaceX facility in no, Hawthorne, no, 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 no. California, the Tesla factory, uh, and Amazon's headquarters in Seattle. That would is be that, cool, though. That, is that would be cool. I know. Is that where you're going? Those no. are your five? No? Okay. I thought I figured that that's where Eric would want to go. No. And uh, and maybe the the launch base in 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 Russia right there, Kazakhstan. Yeah, that, Kazakhstan. that would be really cool. See, see, <laughs> would see? be really cool. All right, so we have that coming up today. Uh, we've got some giveaways as always. We got some nice giveaways. We got some sweet giveaways, and someone watching right now on this live stream is going to win some of these awesome prizes. Let's begin. 
First, what is this? I should look at another camera. What is this? I, I don't know. We're giving that away. No, this is a very awesome thing. If you have a platypod, or you're thinking of getting a platypod, this is a gooseneck that screws right into the platypod. It's like this one like, here. Like right in front of you there. It's like this one right here. Yeah, you can put stuff you on that, that gooseneck and it gooses. All right, it's Lucy, it's Goosey, but everybody loves them. They're like, this is like the hottest product of the year. All right, hey, this book that we've been looking at for, I don't know, nine months is actually here. And Finally. tonight, tonight, not only, I'm doing a book chat tonight. All tonight, right, so tonight. tonight, oh, I was looking at the wrong camera. Hi. Hi, Scott Kilby here. Tonight, I'm doing a book chat all about this book. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the book. I'm going to share some techniques for the book. So it's kind of like a class based on a book, and that's tonight, and it's free, and everybody can do it. It's at <coughs> 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're in the U.K., it's time to stay up late. If you're in the U.S., well, it's perfect. So anyway, but it is, uh, it's in stock at Rocky Nook's warehouses. They are shipping them immediately. Amazon is supposed to have them any day, actually. And it'll be Amazon on, uh, already has them. It'll be on your Facebook. So, yeah, it'll be, we'll so if you're watching my this Facebook on Facebook, tonight. it's going to be the same place. If you're not, then it's yeah. going to be at facebook.com so, forward slash S. Kelby. Right. So Facebook, S. Kelby. Tonight at 7 p.m., I invite you to come now. Uh, Rocky Nook, my book's publisher, they have got deals tonight. I, I kid you not. They have the most ridiculous deals that have ever been made on my books, probably in the history of my books. When you see them, you're going to be like, it's crazy. I know. So they're going to give away a deal on this book. So if you haven't bought it yet, don't buy it today. Wait till tonight, because I promise you, you probably will not get a better deal ever, ever. So that's tonight, and they got a bundle. They're going to give that and then a bundle of my other books, and the both prices are just stupid to where I should probably sue them. Uh, what's the other thing? Uh, oh, uh, we, so we, uh, they're also giving away two $50 gift cards to buy any books you want from Rocky Nook. So that's tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you haven't been one of the book chats, they're not the most serious thing that I do. <laughs> so it, ma it makes the, uh, it's seriously it makes the grid look more like 60 <laughs> minutes. So, um, it's seriously entertaining. No, I don't know. It's, it's, it's something. But anyway, it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's not serious at all. If you're expecting to like come and like, it'd be no, serious. I got some good content for tonight. It's good though. content. I really do have good stuff to but teach. But it's going to be like the show. It's not going to be that serious. Yeah, it's not super serious. But <laughs> I do have some really good content tonight. I really cherry picked some cool parts of the book to show you, like, oh, this will this will be good. So that's coming up tonight. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. There you go. Uh, what else are we giving away? Might be some cheese, might be some wine, who knows? There could be wine and cheese. Do you know what, though? Uh, I've been doing all my book chats. I've done three of them. I've done them from my home. But tonight, we're actually <coughs> coming in the studio here. It's mm -hmm. going to look like my home because I took pictures and we stick it up. But anyway, uh, that's tonight. Right here. Lytra 2.0. This is it. Oh, I'm sorry, the Lytra Torch 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just the Lytra 2.0, it's the Lytra Torch 2.0, the brightest, craziest little light you've ever seen. Everybody loves these things, and we are giving one away today. So some lucky viewer who's watching right now is going to get this ridiculously bright, cool little light. All right, and, oh, also I got a little announcement, okay? So we're giving away a Slick Pick Master account. <laughs> I keep, I'm always <laughs> looking at the wrong, I'm so, I'm just not... You know what it is? The little red lights that come on that say, look at this camera. They're just not coming on. So I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I got to blame it on the tool. Now Jason it's the, understands. It's He's the like, poor craftsman that blames his tools. Okay. I'll look at this camera that doesn't have a red light. So, um, uh, we're, we're giving away a slick pick portfolio level account, which is their like their big account where you put your portfolio online. They, you can even ask for a graphic designer to help you, and they will help you. It's part of the deal. Uh, but honestly, I, I built mine, and I finished it. Now, I haven't linked it to my blog, but if you go to SlickPick and look it up, people are finding it. So go to SlickPick, S-L-I-C-K-P-I-C, and my new portfolio is there. And I've had to get everything down to 24 pictures across each category. It, that's what takes all the time. Putting the thing together is, is really, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. The other stuff is a brainer, like deciding which ones do I keep and which ones. And I refreshed it a bit too. I added some new photos, took out some old photos. So that's, uh, that's what I was doing. So it is up and live. I'm going to try to link it to my blog. I meant to do it last night, so I forgot. But if you go to slickpick.com or search for Scott Kelby, I won't be able to do it. I won't have time to do it on the break. Hey, maybe Eric will call one of his web team. Eric has this powerful web team and say, hey, 
why don't you link to Scott's new portfolio where it says portfolio on his blog, why don't we switch it to his new site? That's ClickPick. Could happen. But Eric doesn't know the actual address of my ClickPick site. If I knew that, I could but make I'm gonna, it happen. You're on your phone all the time, I'll just text it to you. Yeah. Anyway. We'll make it happen. Let's get going. Now we know what our giveaways are. Eric, hey, tell gotta, them how they enter the prize out. conference. How do they how do they win one of these prizes, Eric? Like what do they do? Talk to me, Tammy something. Oh, sorry, I was on my phone. <laughs> Wiener. <laughs> um, so to enter enter the contest, you just leave us a comment. So just tell us uh, what you want to win or tell us just hey, hi, where you're from, uh, and you're automatically entered. So just uh, leave a comment anywhere, everywhere. We're uh, checking that and Christina will collect that. And at the end of the show, we will randomly select uh, some winners to win the prizes. All right. Hey, can you see my screen? So this is this is it. I, I have it up and I can even tell you the address. It's scottkelby.slickpick.site. So that's the address. And uh, I, I mean, it's, I'm not 100% done. I kind of pulled the trigger on it. But so like these these um, these things are you can press a little button and it brings up other pictures. So it's that kind of thing. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to add a few more images. I only have three images there on the front page. But then if you click into the portfolios, I have got travel, fashion and beauty, people, the great indoors, sports, and football. So hey, look at I found it. There it is. Yeah, okay, that's it. So anyway, that's, we don't have to go through all that. And I sent you the link, Eric. So if they want to go to my blog and pop that in there for when you click on portfolio, that's where you go. Hey, uh, Ron is, is crawling oh. around the floor of the studio playing with chords. Can I tell you something? That just means something's going perfect. If you see Ron on his knees <laughs> tracing cables during a live show, <laughs> the only thing you can think of, things are going well. I mean, fortunately, the, the monitors that are showing us what's going on haven't been screwed up yet. So I imagine well, they're just trying to maybe get that uh, preemptive? tally light. Oh, the tally working. light. Oh, it's the tally light. That That's tally the red light. light we keep talking about. Okay. The red light. So, hey, let's get to it. Let's, let's, because I don't want to just keep going until we get to the break. I want to get to a few of these cities. I am very interested to hear. Give me like a few of your dream and, and you guys. Oh, that so, are, so that's a locations, you know, like, you know, if we're going to, are we going to, because I have some cities, but I also have some places, right? Right. Hey, before um, you do that, can I, can, I'm sorry to interrupt, Eric. Yep, I'm yep. sorry. Hey, can we get the, the monitor where the comments come? I, I can't. All I'm looking at is, is black. They're, they're working on it. Oh, they're uh, working on that, too. We're uh, having some uh, technical difficulties with a oh, computer okay. not booting up. Oh, okay, so. because we, we have a, a big, a huge, the biggest screen you've ever seen in here that has all the comments on it, but uh, right now it's so just we So might, we might get it soon. But, okay, well, that's know, okay. Yeah. Let's roll in. I'm, I'm anxious to hear what your locations are. So, so I, got, I got one location. It's not really like a city, but, you know, and actually this is one where I, I talked a lot, uh, you know, because I've always been interested um, in uh, going here, but then I was talking to David Zeiser um, last, it was actually last Photoshop World. And you, we were talking about places, and, yeah. and this is a place that's high on my list that he said you have to put higher on your list, and that is, I really want to go and photograph and experience Vietnam. Like, that area of the world looks yeah. very intriguing. I love uh, just the, 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 the topography and how it is and the cities and stuff. Everything I've seen from there looks very interesting. Plus, I, I would love to go there for the food and all that other stuff. So, Hey, my buddy Jeff Ravel went there mm -hmm. and loved it. He loved, yeah. loved it. He came back. He went to Cambodia. He went to Vietnam. Yep. And he went to, uh, you know, Angkor Wat and all that. Yeah, so, and, I uh, mean, that, that whole area would yeah, be dude, very, he loved it. very he loved intriguing it. to me. Okay, so. that's, you know, that's not anywhere on my list, but, yeah. you know, maybe it should be. Yeah, I mean, it's just that, that whole region. Well, and even if you get up to, like, even that... North Vietnam and the China area, you get like that so different topography than what you get in the South Vietnam and that area. So um, it just it looks very intriguing to me. Um, really want to just check that that region out. How you about have, you? Do you have any interest in going to Thailand? I do. I yeah. do. Dev and well, that, a couple other places in that region are on my list. Uh, actually, above Thailand would be I really want to go to Myanmar. I mean, that looks okay. That very, one is on my list. That is on my list. Right? That is that is one that is. I, I it's right on my list written right here. Right. Well, and uh, who was it? Um, uh, one of the gallery winners. Um, oh, God, oh yeah, Doctor. Doctor. Doctor Love. Man, my. That, I know. So any sorry. other time, I can tell you his name. I, I know his name. Um, well, anyways, Myanmar looks awesome. Wait, Stephen. Stephen. 
Oh my goodness. Hang on. I'm, I'm totally, gonna, I'm gonna I'm get totally it blanking you. right I know, now. I can't believe I'm blanking either. And, but I'm telling you, if I could find it. Well, let me go to gallery.kelby1. Or is it Steve? It's Steve. Steve yeah. Wallace. There it is. Steve Wallace. Yes. He is, that's, he's the guy that made me want to go there. Yes. Steve Wallace's shots from Myanmar. Here you go. Here you go. I got the portfolio or his, his gallery images up on oh, my Oh, yeah. Screen. Can you show it? Yeah. Like right here. Oh, like, come on. Look yeah. at that. So everything from here just looks really, really cool. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's an interesting, interesting place, interesting people, you know. And everything he talked about it, he loved it. So I would love to love to go there. That's high on the list. Oh, well. yeah, mine too. And he's got such wonderful shots. So he won a gallery competition here at Kelby One, and he took over our entire gallery. We did an opening with him and uh, uh, had a wine and cheese reception, and we have his images beautifully printed hanging on the walls, and it's just, it was really stunning to see it. He was a really cool guy and shared a lot of great techniques and things. So that oh, was yeah. it was just that was just a really special thing. But but it was his images that made me add it to my list. Oh yeah. Now we would also love to hear your guys' suggestions for places to go. Yeah, and I believe we'll start seeing them pretty soon because we've got yeah, a new like computer. And, All right. And we'll see comments coming pretty okay, we'll soon. See comments so soon, tell comments us where soon. you where you want to go or where you want to travel. But yeah, that's definitely I'm that, you, that region is interesting. Vietnam right. is definitely first on the list. So Myan Myanmar was, was number five, but I don't have them actually in order. So these are just ones that are going. Okay. All right. I would say like one of my, my real hot spots to want to go right now is to travel to Fez in Morocco. Then here's what I want to do. And I, Eric knows I've been talking about this. I got but, a similar one on my list. Here's yeah. what the whole trip would be. I would start in Lisbon. Now, Lisbon is on my best photography travel places because mm -hmm. Lisbon... We went there, we spent days in Lisbon, and I think that we kind of scratched the surface of what we could have done because there's so much near Lisbon, like right did near Lisbon. Did you go Lisbon. to Porto? I did not go to Porto, but it's on my list. It is on my dream spot list. So That would be on my dream list too if I went now, there. Now, so zoom in on this map. This is good, thank you. Zoom mm -hmm. in on the map a little more. All right, you see Fez up there on the top right kind of-ish? Scroll down a little bit, and you'll see Fez. Yeah. I mean, I'm other sorry, way. other way. Up, <laughs> Scroll up, up. up. So Fez, Fez, there's Fez, and then from Fez, but it's not Fez that I want to actually photograph, yes. though I would photograph Fez. Well, so I think what you're going to say, and that's on my list, is you want to get out to the desert. No, I do, okay. I do. Or you want to, is it the Blue City? The Blue City, okay. yes. yes. But here's the whole trip. So I would take a TAP Portugal, fly right. from New York to Lisbon. I would hook up with Chiqui Nando, we drive, it's four hours from Lisbon to Porto. And Porto, and I love Lisbon, don't get me wrong, but everybody I know says if you go to Portugal, you have to go to Porto. It is a beautiful city. So we would go, and Chiqui Nando has already promised to drive me and Eric <laughs> to Porto. So then we come back to Lisbon when we're done, and you fly directly. It's an hour-something flight to go from Lisbon to Fez. Mm -hmm. So it's not a very long flight at all. And you fly on Air Morocco, a nice airline, modern jets, very, very nice. So you fly there. We stay in Fez for a night or two. Then we go out and we stay in the Sahara Desert. That's on my list. The in Sahara a really Desert. nice, some really nice tents. <laughs> We're not going to sleep under the stars. We're going to find like a luxury resort out there. I could go in a tent in the desert. No, I'd be fine no we it. can't let that happen to Kuna. He would do it. He's done some things yeah, with Rami I've done that, some things. that. But you know what? Eric is much younger than I am. He's like... <laughs> a, a quarter my age so uh anyway so then after that then we go to the blue city mm -hmm. so we hit we're hitting well, lisbon and for people that don't why is it called the blue city because everything is is white is like washed in this blue color and it's all different shades of blue and then they call it the blue city because it really does look if you go to you're on google there yeah morocco yeah, like, oh, don't say morocco yeah, Morocco like Blue City. 500 PX or something. Maybe. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's not showing up as Morocco. Did you spell Morocco right? That's, it's important. It's like Morocco Mole plus Blue City. I'll find it. Hang on a second. All right. So the Blue City in Morocco. Let's see what we got. 
All right. Here, oh, yeah. I, I got okay. 500 Boom. PX. I got some good images here. It's called Chef Chowin? Here you go. There it is. Okay, this is it. That's this is the it. Blue City. Yeah. I mean, that's just a photography All right, wait, dream. See that boating picture in the middle? I don't think that is the Blue City. No. That is just outside of... But this, a, is the, this is the basic town. concept. That yes, that's it. Everything's kind of washed in this Everything's blue. blue with some yellow accents. I love it. I'll oh go up a little bit. I love that wall. It's a very famous wall. Go a little higher, right there to your left with all the plants on it and all. That's a, the, every you can see that every photographer shoots that, because look, go ahead and close out of that. Like hit mm -hmm. the back button, mm -hmm. and then watch. Look two two steps over, and there's another Same photographer one. doing it. And you scroll down a little, and there's, there's another, another one. one. Like the very famous. Okay, there's, so there's a lot of spots that. But I think that there's a lot of like uh, beautiful stuff that you can do there color-wise. So that's one of my spots. And then, of course, the other one is, um, you know, to be able to go to Morocco. I mean, to, uh, to Fez. I haven't been to Fez. And I, I've been to um, Marrakesh. And it was pretty cool. But I don't really have any awesome pictures. I have a couple of okay pictures. I don't really have anything awesome from there. But um, anyway, that's where we want to go. Now, I do want to add a couple more. So I added that. That's trip number one. The other trip is I want to go to Patagonia. So this is in Chile. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not close, but it's really, I don't know if it's that much further than going to any place else. But, it's, it's off the beaten path, that's right. for sure. But when you see pictures of, from the mountains of Patagonia, it looks like nowhere else. There you go. Like there's, there's a couple of places like the Dolomites uh, and Leah. Yeah, Some like of these there. pictures, look at that. Right there, yeah. The, hey, can you click into that top one that you were just looking at? This one? Yeah. Yeah, I want to go there. Yes, I mean, these mountains are so unique. It's like the Dol Dolomites, you know? I mean, it has that kind of feel where it's got these like sharp teeth kind of looking. Yeah, but, but this is... There's it's so totally many, different. that's one area. This is one area, but there's many, many areas that are really just incredible. Yeah. But anyway, it's, I mean, it's landscapes yeah. you only see there. I want to go there. Yeah, I want to go there, right? I want to go there. I want to go there with a longer exposure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's, that's on my list, all right? So there's that. So that is one, and I'm going to give you one more. I want to go to Antarctica. Now, that oh, is a boy, new... Oh, boy, you stole one of my high ones. That is a new one on my list, but can I tell you? Oh, yeah. Two people took pictures there that made me want to go. Winston Hendrickson took such beautiful pictures. It was the first time I ever thought I want to go. Because everyone goes, like, I know so many photographers that have been, and I've always been kind of like, I mean, it's okay. It's big chunks of ice and all. When Winston came back with those shots, I'm like, I want to go. And then this, the one-two punch was Rick Salmon. Rick Salmon oh, yeah. got some great, great shots up there. And that was it. I'm like, okay, boom, it's on my list. I wrote it down. I actually keep an actual list. I have an actual list in my, in my notes app, and that's an actual list of things. But, man, you, there's some stuff. Uh, you know who also did some nice stuff was Julianne Cost did some nice stuff up in mm -hmm. Antarctica. But it was Winston Hendrickson that made me fall in love with it, and then it was uh, Rick Salmon that sold me on, like, I got to go. And Rick goes quite often. So I'm, I, I keep telling them, dude, I'm going to come and, and like just ride yeah, your coattails. Yeah, I mean, definitely. That's, that's one high on the list. And you know what I love about it is it's, it's otherworldly. Yeah, a, it is. A lot of the places that I, I like to go uh, don't look, it's not just not, it's atypical. That's what Patagonia was on the list too because it looks otherworldly. Otherworldly, it, yeah. It, it has this like a, a appeal. And Patagonia and Antarctica are actually very close to one another. Yeah, once you're, in, once you're yeah. down there, all the way down yeah. there at Chile. Yeah. So, uh, and exactly. you know what else? Have you ever tried the, uh, the, the chips and salsa at Chili's? Oh, yeah. It's very good. Incredible. Very good. So, and their, their fajitas and their baby back ribs, so good. All right. Absolutely incredible. Yes. Okay. We, we, yeah, we do need to do a break. When we come back, I got a place that I could, I, could, uh, I think might be on your list, too. Might not. We'll I see. don't have many left on my list. I only have uh, a few. I, I, got a, I, got a, I got a lot. Oh, okay. I have a few, but I do have two more lists. Places that are I've been to that are awesome. I would love to go back. And then I have the list called surprisingly not as awesome as you would think. Okay. So those are coming up. All right. Don't forget. Did you tell them how to, how to enter? Yes, I did. All right. All right. And oh, we got a big announcement. Okay. So we do have a big announcement. We've been talking about the worldwide photo walk 
and how we're going to do it this year. Now, we let you guys know, we kind of gave you guys a heads up last week that it is the first Saturday in October. That's not the biggest secret in the world because we always do it on the first Saturday in October. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, we have to change the, the whole scheme, but we think we come up with something that's going to be a lot of fun. So we have a video where I explain the whole thing and take you through it. It's a few minutes, just hang in there and all, because it's important to hear all the way through of why we need to do it, how we're going to do it, what role you can play and how we can all have a have a really cool photo walk this year even though it's going to be a little different than we normally do it and we were very lucky to get the input from our community yep uh, and we talked to a lot of people who are, have been walk leaders for many years and things and so this is what really you're a lot of the, I, the idea of what we're going to do oh, came yeah. from the community not yes, really did, they changed our ideas yeah because yeah. eric and i had a direction we were going in and we got in front of the whole community and they were like how about this and there were so many great ideas that it literally by the end of it turned it on its ear so that's what you're going to see now so sit back Back, relax. Have a glass of Cavassier as we uh, as we roll out, and you are getting to see this again first because Friday is the official launch. But uh, we're going to show it to you guys now. So check out this video that explains it all, and stick around. Of course, we'll be right back with with a lot more, and we want to hear your comments as well about locations. So be, be now that our our monitors back up, we'll be looking at those when we come back from from this. May take take a look at the video. As photographers, we love a good story. We are by nature storytellers. And I've got a story for you today that has it all. It's about a struggle, it's about community, it's about photography. It's got a villain, a hero, and that's not all. It's not about somebody else, it's about you. But our story starts back in 2006 when a woman named Molly, now I know Molly because she goes to the same small church my family goes to. Anyway, after Molly takes a trip to Africa to help feed some street kids, She's so moved by the experience that when she comes back, she decides to sell everything. Quit her job, sells her home, her car, her furniture, everything, and she and her family move to Nakuru, Kenya to try and build an orphanage. Now, with the help of donations from photographers all over the world, within a year of moving, she was able to take an empty piece of land and build totally from scratch a home to house, feed, educate and to love and care for 31 amazing kids. I mean, that's incredible. She gave up everything to build an orphanage halfway around the world from her home. To this day, a lot of the funding the orphanage receives each year comes from photographers who take part in my annual worldwide photo walk each October. We come together to walk, take pictures, but most importantly, we raise money for the Springs of Hope Orphanage in Kenya. The orphanage really relies on these donations from us each year. I mean, can you imagine how much it costs just on an average day to feed 31 people? How about clothing and education and medicine and transportation, let alone the food? It's crazy, right? But the photography community comes together every year to do this for the orphans, and it's a beautiful thing to be a part of. But this year, of course, we're facing a new problem because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We can't really get together safely in groups on photo walks like we've always done. And while missing the group part is disappointing, it's really just a bit of an inconvenience for us. But for the orphanage, this is a serious critical issue. The donations from the photo walk are too important, they're too critical, and so we have to find a way to still come together as a photographic community. Granted, we're gonna do it in a different way this year, but we have to come together so these awesome children don't fall through the cracks. They are counting on us and we've gotta come through for them. So we have a plan for this year's walk, and it's one that will still allow us to enjoy photography, make some new images on photo walk day, just like always, and it can still raise money for the orphanage. It lets us accomplish our goal as photographers and as the people who step up each year and help the orphanage. It's a modified version of the photo walk, but it's one we think could work for everybody. This year's official worldwide photo walk date is Saturday, October 3rd, 2020, but we won't be getting together in groups of 50 for a two-hour pre-planned walk route like we have in the past. Instead on that day, you're going to go out on your own, just you and your camera, or you and a family member, and a camera. You'll have all day that Saturday to go out in your local area and make some really great shots. We're not going to have leaders plan a route for you and choose the route. You get to choose the route yourself and visit these local areas you always thought would be great to make some pictures. Afterward, if you want, 
you can upload your favorite shot to our worldwide gallery so other photographers around the world can see what you were seeing that day. And now, instead of just seeing the photos from your local walk, you're gonna be seeing a giant gallery of photo walkers all over the world taken that one Saturday in October all together in one place online. Besides this huge worldwide gallery, there's a free, totally optional photo competition you can enter if you want, and it's one where you could win a really cool prize. And for the first time ever, we'll be live streaming all day on the Worldwide Photo Walk Day to share images, to share some winners, to share stories from walkers all over the world. We're also doing random drawings for prizes that day as well, so everybody at least has a chance to win whether you enter a competition or not. The whole thing wraps up in just one day. The shooting, the judging, the whole nine yards. We're even gonna have some of the kids from the Springs of Hope share the images that they'll be taking that day as well. So how does this all raise money for the orphanage? We're going to ask you for a very small donation when you sign up for the walk this year. And 100% of the $5 entry fee goes directly to the orphans at Springs of Hope. Not a percentage, not a cut, it all goes to the kids. Now of course, you can donate more and thankfully every year so many photographers do that by hitting the donate button on the official Worldwide Photo Walk website. Plus, we'll be raising more money for the orphanage by selling the official Photo Walk t-shirts like we do every year. We're also for the first time hosting blind online auctions where you can bid on prints from some of the most famous photographers in the world. Or picture this, how about a one-on-one -on -one Skype instruction session with some of your favorite instructors? There will be lots of other opportunities for those of you who want to go above and beyond to help the kids this year. It's going to be a really fun day. We can still be creative, we can still come together, and we can still help others. It's a big win for everybody involved. To make things easy, this year we'll be setting up the Photo Walk Cities for you, all over the world. Now, we're, of course, we're going to use last year's Walk Cities as a guide. So, the cities are ready to go. You can go sign in to your local Photo Walk right now. That way, you can still connect with local photographers online and make new friends, share your experiences virtually, even though you won't be connecting in person with them until after this whole virus thing is behind us. I encourage you to go to WorldwidePhotoWalk.com right now. Sign up for a walk near you and make a small donation. Then come and join us Saturday, October 3rd, as the photography community comes together, joins together, bands together for my 12th annual Worldwide Photo Walk for the Springs of Hope Orphanage. It's going to be a very special day, and I want you to be a part of it. Thank you so much, and we'll see you online Saturday, October 3rd. In 2020, Adobe blew everybody's mind that uses Adobe Camera Raw, or the Camera Raw plugin for Photoshop. They completely changed the interface, they added a new workflow, they added lots of new features, and everybody is freaked out. They're freaked out. That's okay, you don't have to worry about it because I want to take you through the whole new interface. I'm going to show you how to master this interface, how to make the most of it. And when I take you through everything and show you all the stuff, and there's way more than you'd think that they've done, a lot of the stuff is kind of under the hood, little secret kind of stuff like that. Once you see what it all is, you're going to be like, I love this new workflow. My mind is unblown. And now you'll be able to work faster and more efficiently than you ever have in Camera Raw. Come and check out my brand new class and it's exclusively right here at Kelby One. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. You know, I wish I had this haircut when I did those videos. My hair is so much nicer now and short, not crazy. Anyway, thank you guys for taking. I know that that was a long that was a long video, so thank you for sitting through that. And I on uh, on uh, Friday we'll have the official launch. We'll have the signups and all that stuff, and you'll see it on my blog. So if you go to my blog on or to go to WorldwidePhotoWalk.com on Friday, that's the big official launch. We're kind of giving you guys a little early heads up, but thanks for taking the time to watch that, and uh, thank you in advance for supporting the orphanage. They, they need us, and we're going to be there for them. All right, Mr. Kuna, do we have comments? Finally, yay. Yes, we do. I mean, we've got uh, some, some great suggestions here for uh, places to go. Uh, so we have 
Karan Char Sharma saying going to the Himalayas. So you know, you know what? I, I have no like like that sounds great. The but I, I don't have any visual picture of like the Himalayas. I, I mean, I don't have that much either. I mean, you have, you know, like immediately you think Mount Everest, but I think I've never seen a picture of Mount Everest that I've been like, oh, I got to go to that. Yeah. It, it's Mount Everest is more about climbing. You know, yeah. it's about that. My but. buddy Jeff last year did the Jeff hike. Did the he hiking. hiked, hiked and it. And it looks nice. I, yeah, I saw I, Jeff's pictures. I mean, it looks nice. All right, but, but you know what? We owe it, we owe it to Karen to, 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 to go... Ooh. Oh, well, now that looks nice. That's the Himalayas? Yeah, I mean, it looks nice. No, that looks actually better than nice. Of course, the first story was eight missing climbers. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh oh. There you go. <laughs> no. Well, and speaking along those lines, you know, Jim saying Alaska of Photographer's Paradise. I've been to Alaska twice. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've never shown any pictures from Alaska. I didn't, I didn't do well in Alaska. What? parts of alaska well i went to the the good parts i don't know i, I, mean, I went alaska's huge. i did it twice <laughs> i did an alaskan cruise where you went all over and you got off at different ports yeah. and we took seaplanes so and if did you all went kinds on a cruise stuff. you got you got no good pictures because you never went to port at the no good no times. no we we <laughs> no well that's true but we did go to port quite a bit and then we we went out to glaciers and we took seaplanes and we flew around and yep. we took tours and all I mean, it was nice. I liked Alaska. I did not do great with it. Now, Jim, I got to tell you, I'm not known for my wildlife photography. So if I was there shooting wildlife, it probably is a super one. Well, now, it, it is a wildlife paradise. There's, yeah. there's also great landscapes that I did not capture either. <laughs> so I need to go back to Alaska is what I'm saying, Jim. I, 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 but that is, I, I know people that love it so much. They're so crazy about it. And of course, now that I see these pictures, I'm thinking, wow, I'm missing all that. But yeah, it, it, that was not what it looked like to me. That, that, Oh, that's nice. Oh, gosh. Yeah, now mean, I'm going to have to add Alaska to my list. There's great stuff to be had. Now I mean, I'm going I've to the seen, Himalayas I've and seen, Alaska. Ooh, look at that. Okay, there. so I saw stuff like that. That I did see. My pictures don't look as good as that. But, yeah, I did see, like, those creeping glacier type of stuff. Yep. But you know what it is about those that's weird to me, Eric? They always look dirty. Like, yeah, the glaciers? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like those glaciers don't look like the glaciers you see in Antarctica where they're pristine and they're clean and all. They always look dirty. They look like someone needs to clean that up. Yeah, that's the most. Yeah, most. Dude, of the look at I've that. Seen. Where's that? Uh, Denali National Park. Yeah. I, I don't know how you get up that high to get that shot, but I know I wouldn't be hiking up there. You might be in a helicopter. Might All be right, let's get to some more comments. Uh, you know, Diane's agreeing uh, with uh, everyone who loves travel needs to go to Antarctica. So obviously, you yeah, know, that's Antarctica. way up on my list. Diane. Uh, and then Andy's saying, uh, let's go to China again, Scott. Yeah. Oh, Andy. Hey, let me tell you, Andy, besides just being a lights out still photographer, he is a drone master and he would put up that drone in China because there's no rules. It's China. And dude, he got some stunning drone footage. Like, looks like National Geographic quality drone stuff. So good to see you in there, Andy. And uh, I agree. Let's go to China again. <laughs> Maybe not right now. <laughs> Maybe we'll wait a little bit. Yeah, we'll wait a but little I bit. But I would, I would definitely go. That, that was then, an incredible and trip. And Bruce is saying uh, Las Palmas and the Canary Eating for Night Sky. That's actually on my list. Really? Uh, to go to the Canary Eating. So it's on my list. Uh, the, uh, especially uh, Tenerife in that area. Uh, yeah. Again, I go for these otherworldly places. I don't know. Where if are ever... the Canary Islands, like geographically? Uh, it's off the coast of uh, Morocco. So if you go off the coast oh, of Morocco. Oh, it's off the off coast there. of Morocco. Um, so. Well, I would go over there with you if you want when we go. I'll go to the Canary Islands. I, I'm not a super night sky guy. I'll do it with, with you, but I'll, you know, I'll have some yeah. snacks while you're doing it. I'll be yeah. over there. I mean, it is, it is amazing. I'm, I'm not finding good shots yet of it, but. Um, but anyways, it's definitely, it's uh, very otherworldly out there. Um, oh, now look. So uh, Babs Baker has got some. The Isle of Mull, Sky, or any of the Scotland? islands off Scotland. So yeah. I, actually, I actually had the Scottish Highlands on my list. That is of my dream spots, the, the Scottish Highlands. I've seen pictures from up there that are absolutely stunning. Now, that being... Aside, 
the Scottish people are like the greatest. Like, if you, get, if you ever go to Scotland, the Scottish people themselves are just the most friendly, awesome, cool, great people. And then they're surrounded with beautiful, it would, it would be great. I'm, I don't know how the Scottish food, I don't remember the food very well, which probably, you know, means I didn't have a lot of Scottish food. Yeah. But I had a lot of food while I was there, I'm certain of that. But uh, anyway, but uh, thank you, Babs. The Isle of Mull, I'm going to actually just tag that with the Isle, Isle of Mull. All right. Or Sky. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's, it's actually now on my list of Scottish Highlands. So that's all I only have three spots left. All right, and uh, let's see. Go to Cabot Trail in Cape Brenton, Nova Scotia. That's from Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Um, I've never heard of it. I've heard of Nova Scotia, of course. I've never heard of the Cabot Trail or Cape Brenton. Can we bring up some shots from there in the control room? Uh, well, I from the search for it on 500px. It's looking like... Uh... I don't know. I'm trying to find something. Oh, now that looks nice. Oh, yeah, it looks nice. Looks like the Faroe Islands. Squirrel! Which would make sense over on Nova Scotia. That's nice. Beautiful. You know, and that actually brings up a good point. There is a lot of places to go. It's just, and I'd like to go to some of these, like you're saying, these not, these otherworldly, not, you yes. know, off the beaten path. Yes. And, and things go through, like, like everybody wanted to go to Iceland for a while. Like, that was the big thing. And, and Dave Williams goes there about every Thursday. Dave, Dave Williams, we're going to find him moving to Iceland. But uh, the last time I was in Iceland, which was last year or a year and a half ago, uh, we went to Reykjavik and hung out there, and that was the first time I really spent any time in Reykjavik. It was very nice. Like, Reykjavik is a really cool city unto itself. Forget all the, uh, the waterfalls. It's a city. It was awesome. I liked it better than Bergen, Norway, which, you know, everybody's like, Bergen, Norway, and all. Bergen, Norway was all right. Reykjavik, terrific. So this is uh, Tenerife. Like, this is the type of pictures that I was talking about. So, like, oh, heck. Like that is in the Canary Islands? Yes. I mean, I want to go here. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going. I'm going with you. We'll do that. We're adding that to our itinerary. And dark sky. We'll be gone for six weeks. <laughs> You're going to be good. So that's another thing for dark sky photography. Dark sky get... at night. All righty. Yeah. Hey, uh, let's go with, get a couple more cities here while we're talking. So I'm going to give you one of my... My, my picks, like if you're thinking where you want to go. Now, it would be very easy for me to just go, go, go to Paris. Because it's, it's, talk about photographer's paradise. Paris has just it all. However, that's not my, my thing to tell you. It's the rest of France. The French countryside and outside of Paris. Now, Paris is great. Fly into Paris, spend a few days in Paris, but don't just fly home. The Paris countryside is just the little tiny towns, uh, the little villages, the castles. There are so many things. And, and France geographically is not giant, so you can get around it certainly by train. Uh, and uh, I'm telling you what, it is a wonderland of things to shoot. And you will come back with so many different looks and stuff. That is yep, on, and that's a, piece of, that's a piece of land right there. <laughs> that is on my list as well. Yeah, just France, though, in general. Not, I mean, Paris. But this is where I want to go. Yeah. All right. This is where I want to go, right here. And, and I where's want to go to these lavender oh, fields. Oh, the lavender fields. In Valensole. Yeah, yes, I went there. My son and I, I went go. there. Uh, I mean, it just, there's just, it just looks so cool. But you know, like, like you were talking about, it's very, there's a window you got to hit yep. it. So it's one of those things where you got to hit the window. Yeah, but, um, but also when you're there, it, it's a lot of the exact same thing. It is a lot know, of what you're seeing. You're going after it's, one, you're going after yeah, one thing. And that's rows what's hard with that. And rows and rows of the same. I know, but it just looks so. It so, is cool, but it's, it's just. It's not an area where you spend a t Now, the actual town of Valensol, mm -hmm. just so charming. We had dinner in it. My son and I had an outdoor cafe. Yeah, There's a little town square. Yeah. I'm going to find the, I'm gonna find the shot for you because I took this from our, my dinner table. I'm going to find it. Give me two seconds here. 
And uh, let's see, Paris, oh, travel, and then Paris, and there we go. Let me find the picture that I'm looking for. It won't take me but a minute because uh, it just won't take me but a minute. But anyway, uh, it's toward the end of the trip. And where are, where is that shot? Because there was, we were having dinner and I, and I was like, here it is. So take a look at this. So this is from the table where I'm having dinner. Oh, I yeah. just steadied my camera on something. I didn't get as long exposure as I would have liked, but it was blue hour, and I'm like, son, I got him. Uh, hold on, hold on to that hold baguette, on. son. <laughs> hold on. Now my son's grown. He's 22. He speaks French. French was his minor in college, so it was great to have have him there. But you know, some of these people speak English. But yeah, that's literally we're sitting there, and there's a road right there, a little you know, a little road going through the town, and we're sitting in an outdoor cafe having dinner, and it was just beautiful. So that area of southern France is very very gorgeous. But I just want to give you a heads up. It is really cool to see those lavender fields, but it's not a four day trip. Oh yeah, it's like uh, lavender field, like, and that's where some of this stuff sunset, is. Like sunset, sunrise, and then like goes there is else. one thing. I mean, that's an, an, another one. I'll, I'll go on my list. I got another one, and, okay. and I think it is a kind of a one trick or, or one thing, but it is is weird. It's it it is dead trees, but I want to Joshua. go to Namibia. Right? Oh, that's on my list. I Namibia. want to go to Namibia. Yes, I want, yes, I want this. Yes, you know, I yes, want this. that's the tree. You and go. And I want this. Like I yep. want yes. that shot. Yes, yes, like, yes. like that. I want that. Hold you know? this thought because we're gonna take a break and we're gonna come back and talk about Namibia. It is yep. so on my list. So it sounds like we need to go. We do need to go to <laughs> Namibia. A buddy of mine, Mike Carlson, who's a photographer for the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, went to Namibia and he got yeah. great, great shots. But that's I'm gonna lead. I want to tell you my story where I went. Oh my gosh, the day I wanted to go to Namibia. And, and there's a particular thing I want to get. Right. I'm gonna, I want to steal this photographer shot so I can put it in my home. I'm not going to sell it. No one else is going to have it. I'm totally ripping them off. We'll talk about ripping off photographers <laughs> after the break. Is the tripod dead? Sure, a tripod works for basic shots, but who wants to be basic? You don't need basic. You need Blockbuster. And that's a job for a platypod. The Platypod is your go-anywhere, do-anything flat tripod base. Its compact design helps you discover unique angles that you could never reach with a typical tripod. So, whether you're bringing up baby, driving Miss Daisy, or with your beasts of the southern wild, you can capture big budget footage and stills for a fraction of the time and money. So go ahead, shoot the next Rocky or Birdman. Or on the waterfront, the Platypod is equipped to grip uneven surfaces and hang from just about anything. When tripods go low, the Platypod goes lower. Its flat base reaches the lowest possible angle, resulting in truly inventive shots that can't be replicated with traditional equipment. And if you feel like adding a dramatic overhead angle, the Platypod has you covered. Just strap it or screw it in, and you're ready to go within minutes. The Platypod is constructed from aircraft-grade aluminum and titanium. Yeah, the stuff Air Force One is made of. So, it's durable enough to travel with you from Chinatown to Casablanca and everywhere in between. If you only take the tripod, the story ends. You wake up the next morning with nothing but basic footage. Or you could take the Platypod to a museum, or on an elevator, or strap it to a tree, or hang it on a bench at church or put it on the ground and get incredible blockbuster footage. Who are we kidding? You should totally take the Platypod. The tripod is not dead, but it needs a sidekick. The Platypod. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer living in Los Angeles, California, and I'm a fine art artist. I love Sneak Peek because you can host all your photos online. You can share the best one through albums with incredible privacy settings. For example, you can just share an album to like three people or for just a number of hours. They have amazing watermarking on the fly where you can just change your mind and watermark and redo the watermark or take it out and it's instant on all your photos. Having an official portfolio is so vital today. Now, they have an amazing launching deal where for just taking the basic subscription we're offering now, which is roughly $15 a month, you're gonna get a professional designer to do your website for you. All you have to do is fill in a form, 
with a few data and you're good to go, a designer will design your website for you. So if you don't like web design, this is a great opportunity. I think we're better off taking photos and learning how to do HTML and CSS and getting the most perfect website ever. I mean, even if you were to go the route of WordPress, which I did for many years, having a WordPress is free, but you need to host the WordPress. And a good hosting service is between 10 to $20 a month. So all you have to do is click the link below and get the offer. You will get this special price, which is 50% off for the first year, but you're gonna get it for life. So get it now. I love my sleeping website. I love the business that it drives me and I want the same success for you. Get it now. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we are back. Scott Kelby here with Eric Kuna. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention, if you are a Kelby One member, we have a webcast next week, is it? Yep. And what we're going to be doing is, it's on the same kind of topic, but we're going to be, I'm going to be uh, unpacking some of the trips that I've been on and kind of take you through what to see in these cities and some things like that. So uh, it's basically, we're gonna unpack it. Like today we're picking our favorite cities. I'm gonna actually go through and we're gonna look at pictures and we're gonna talk about uh, tips and things that to, to but you can use in, in, in the cities that you've in been those to. cities that I've been to. So yeah. uh, I'm gonna focus on that. So instead of saying, here's where I wanna go, I'm gonna go, here's where I've been and here's things you can consider for your next trip. So that's coming up. When is it, Eric, next? Next Wednesday. Next uh, Wednesday? Right before the grid, uh, right? It's at 11. I'm looking over at... Uh, it's 11 in producer. the morning next Wednesday for Kelby One members. 11, yeah, yeah. 11. 11 a.m. Eastern time for Kelby One members. That's for that's next Wednesday. We'll be, we'll be looking at actual cities and going through the images. All right. So, Namibia. Here's the day I wanted to go to Namibia. Okay. And it was a very specific thing that made me fall in love with this thing. I was at George Lepp's house. So George Lepp, very, very famous landscape photographer. You probably know George's work. He ran an institute, the Lepp Institute at the time, and I was a guest instructor or whatever. I forget what it was. Something I did something at the Lepp Institute out in California. Beautiful institute, beautiful home. In his beautiful home, he had a little like, reception for the instructors there and stuff. And so went to his house, and I'm walking around like, wow, this is a really cool house. It was a very beautiful home. And he had this picture, but here's what it was. From Namibia, a vertical pano. It was like a six foot high pano on the wall of that tree, and then the, the whole giant sand dune. It's sand dune, it's But Eric, amazing. the scale, oh. the <laughs> color and the scale, dude, I could not, I, there's been few times in my life where I just, I, I couldn't stop looking at it. I had to go back and back and I would just sit yep. there in front of it. And oh, I'm yeah. telling you, it was like this, Eric's like, dang, because what he was able to do the way he did that shot. And this is by the way, one of the reasons we take panos, why couldn't he have shot that, taken that same shot with a wide angle lens? The reason is wide angle pushes things away. It makes them small. When you shoot a pano, you keep the scale, yeah, and that is a big, yeah. big thing. You keep the perspective and the scale. For example, I, I used to show this example of, of the Eiffel Tower, of all things. And I used to show this picture of the Eiffel Tower, and you look at it, and it looks like it's pretty big. But then I showed a guy standing next to it with the right perspective, and it looked like the Eiffel Tower was the biggest thing ever created. Now, the Eiffel Tower is taller than the Empire State Building, right? I don't know about that, but I think I, it, is. it is pretty tall. Let's look it up because we got this thing called Google. Which is taller, Empire State Building or think so. e -F -F -I, Eiffel Tower? Let's see. They're close. I know that. The Eiffel Tower is, oh, it's not quite as high. Wait a minute. Yes. If you include the antenna, it is higher. Yeah, okay. If, if you well, you're going to include the antenna on the Empire State Building. If you include the antenna, it is about 150, ooh, almost 200 feet. Oh, 150 feet taller. It's very tall. And you got the sense of that when you shoot it with a telephoto and you lose that. So when you do a pano like that, oh my gosh, well, I sat in front of that thing and, maybe, and that was it. I'm like, I must go here. I must do this same shot. I'm not going to sell it. I'm not going to try to make any money off it, but I want that. But I don't want, I don't want George to give me a print. 
you know, I mean, I could probably ask yeah, him. Yeah, you want to go on that adventure. And just I like, want to go on the adventure, and I want to go, I got creative. that shot that I was so in, enchanted with. part of it with. is that adventure of just creating the adventure, But I'm right? just going to tell you, if you come into my house, you're going to go, hey, is that that George Lepp shot? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I ripped his butt off. Yes, I did, but I'm not going to make any money or do anything with it. It's for my own personal private use in my own home. We have right. some more comments. So, uh, yeah, we've got uh, Dominique saying uh, to check out uh, Kerala, India. Ooh, dude, I love India. Yep. And then I love the Maria is talking about Tuscany, Italy. I know All right, you've Maria, been there. I was supposed to, so I was going to do two workshops this year uh, in person. One of them I'm still doing. I just hit, we had to move it off till next year, which is Prague. My second was going to be Tuscany. I've been to Tuscany. I love Tuscany. I've been to Tuscany a few times. I'm telling you, it's in Italy, and it's it's the countryside of Italy. A, a it's you know, because you know a lot of Italy is like Florida. It is along the coasts, but the center of Italy that is away from the coasts is just ridiculously awesome. And we were going to base ourselves around Siena, which is a beautiful town uh, in in Italy and we were gonna I, I had it all planned out but guess what not this year not 2020 mm -hmm. all right hey Eric Rick says Rick Rick says yeah if you want to see stars Mauna Kea on the big island has the best and that's in all caps astro viewing it now being really an astro good. viewing guy yeah it's a really good viewing it's, it's yes. a good good viewing yes great. I noticed you didn't I mean, say it was the best I don't know if I'd, yeah, the best, but it's really good, really good. So, all right. Um, I got I got another place, Ooh. and I've got a place that I've been wanting to go. This is somewhere where I want to take a platy pod. I all want right, to take up, like an eleven to twenty four. Let me see if I got it on there. And I just want to go into the Stockholm oh, that, Metro yes. for like a day. I just want to like spend a day underground in the Stockholm Metro. Yeah, and, and it's just go to go crazy. It's because it, Elia it made everybody fall in love with it. This, Dude, it, yeah, it, his stuff is... It's just incredible. Yes, yes it is. Can I tell you what? If you're going to do that, Eric, seriously, I kid yep. you not. If you're going to do that, take a flight from Stockholm and go straight to Moscow and shoot their subways. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Dude, the Moscow subways, type it in. Moscow subway and, and watch. It. Go type it in. You're going to be surprised. Or my, it might be called... Uh, Moscow, uh, what you call it? Metro, like you had. Could be Moscow subway, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I don't know, maybe they lost it. Oh, did you lose it? Oh, no. There yeah, it dude, is. look at their subway stuff. Mm-hmm. Look at that. No, there's just something about it. They're they're very intriguing, but that now, Sweden's one, is more interesting. Sweden's but, just but look, like there's something about it. These are very intriguing. It's yeah. Like, oh yeah. They all look like the Louvre <laughs> underground. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. I would go there too. Yeah, look Definitely. at that. There's some really. I mean, look at that. That's a subway station. Yeah, but then you got that. Yeah, no, there's just crazy. Ooh, that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. That's just crazy. So anyways, oh, that's on the yeah. list. Definitely All right. on the list. Dude, that is, that's a good one. It's not on my list, but maybe it should be. I've, been, I've shot in Stockholm, and it's wonderful. Uh, very great city, tremendous food, the best fries in the world. All I right. I think we have, to take, we have to take another break. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to take one more break. And then when we come back, we've got to do our winners. Yeah, we've got to do our winners. And then we've got to wrap and up. And I'm going to uh, give you the surprisingly not as awesome list, which is going to make some people mad. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so let's do that. We're, we're, so that's what we're looking at when we come back. We're going to be looking at the surprisingly not as awesome. I have two places left on my list. And then, uh, and then we'll all go about our lives there in that go. order. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
Would you believe us if we told you that you could fit studio lighting in your pocket? Well, Lytra has made it possible. Lytra is a global award-winning brand that designs and manufactures professional grade camera lights that are compact, rugged, and waterproof. Whether you're using Lytra gear in a photo studio or underwater, Lytra's mission is to provide content creators with flexible and unlimited lighting tools that can mount on any camera, anywhere. Their lights come with a high CRI or color rendering index, making them some of the most color accurate lights in the industry. Due to the lights compact and rugged design, photographers are able to use the lights in ways that their studio lighting never could. Lytra has also made multiple lighting accessories available to fit your every need as a creator. Whether you're shooting portraits, nailing a product shot, or even flying your drone, they have got you covered. Lytra enables photographers and filmmakers to focus on their craft and create something beautiful. What will you create? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Hey, we are back. So somebody mentioned uh, in, the, in the chat there to look at the St. Petersburg, Russia metros. I pulled them up here on, uh, on 500px. And yeah, they are, they are gorgeous and beautiful. And it's hard to believe. Look at this one. Like, look at this one. Look at the train. It's got yep. chandeliers above it and stuff. Yeah, Come awesome. on, look at that. That's, that's something. Now, here's what's interesting, Eric. May I call you Eric? Yes, yes. How many images of the Sweden Metro are on 500px? Can you take a look? Oh, well, let me see. Uh, like 2,100, 2,200. There's only 17 photos of the St. Petersburg. 17, Eric, on 500 PX, giant worldwide. Hey, there you go. <laughs> it's not flooded. <laughs> it's not flooded. You have the place to yourself. Look at this. It's a subway station. I'm telling you, Eric, it's it's Might uncharted territory. I don't know that Sweden one. I just love the that the earth mixed in with the it's like the i know it's earthy the natural i love that does that remind you of the way the church was in new york the um what was the church in new york that had the or was it new york or was it the national cathedral the one that had the, the bare stone inside oh yeah was that the the not the, i can't think of, it's not one of the big churches it's one that we didn't even know existed i forget there's one of two churches has this Big, it looks like it was carved out of rock. Yeah, it's like it was carved, yeah, and I love that. Where yeah. It's like it's, it's man-made, but it's natural. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Hey, yeah. we got to give a shout out to Brenda Fishbaugh for being the first person, Brenda, to donate to the Springs of Hope. Way to there go, go Brenda. Brenda. That's excellent. That is so great. That is so great. How about yeah, that? Awesome. Brenda, you are a star. Brenda, I am going to send you a signed copy of my brand new book, Send your info, or we'll, can you contact Brenda? Yeah. I would, just as, a, as my way of saying thank you, uh, we got our box of them this week, so I'm going to pull one aside for you. I'm going to sign it for you, Brenda. You are awesome. Thank you for, for getting the ball rolling. That was just wonderful of you, and you are a star. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, so Eric's got a couple last places here. I what do, do you got? Um... I thought you were going to go through. Okay, I'm sorry. I've got two. I only have two left. Yes. Now, this one, Eric and I have been planning on going to. Yes. Zermatt, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. We want to go shoot the Matterhorn that everyone shot to death. And we want to take the same picture everybody else has taken. But it's so cool. It is so cool. And I've been to Switzerland. The food in Switzerland. So, so the things I love about travel is I love seeing the culture. Mm -hmm. I love eating the food. And I love seeing like things that I've seen in pictures. Like I love to go, like I, I remember standing at the, the pyramids in Egypt and just being like, I can't believe it's the freaking pyramids, you know? Like the first time I saw the Eiffel Tower or the Champs-Élysées in France, I, uh, the first time I was in France, I came up out of a subway station and there was the Arc de Triomphe in front of me. I mean, like right in front of me. My brother uh, took me there and he said, I think I know the station to get off at. I think it's Châtelet Hillet. You came up and it's right there and it was just wow, you know. So 
uh, things like that. And, and so I've seen the Matterhorn my whole life. I've ridden it, the ride at Disneyland in California. I want to see the real thing, Eric. Yep. So does Eric. But we want to go in winter. So it yeah, has snow caps. You, you got to get the snow caps. Got to get the snow caps. Snow caps. That so anyway, a long time. So I got, I got, this was the weird, this was, this is the winter we were going to do it. I don't yeah, know. It, it's not happening. All right. So, um, I got one that's interesting that I really want to talk about travel photography. I've always saw, saw this place. Always. Saw it. I really want to go to Fiji. I really, that was my, that was my neck. Well, mine was Bora Bora. So we're right down yeah, the street. It's the same thing. I actually have on my list Fiji or Bora Bora. <laughs> so but All right. Fiji. Bora Bora, I, the, okay. every time you see pictures from there that are beautiful, I'm like, I want to be All there. right, so here's what I want to do though with this, Eric. I want to go for like 10 days, Oof. and I want the first two days to be when I do photography, and I want the and next eight relax. days to where I do nothing. I do <laughs> want to go out and get my- That's a great plan. But you know what? This is interesting because this plays into a blog post I did on Monday. The thing about shooting there is you want that crystal blue turquoise water which means you would not be shooting at dawn or dusk. You could shoot in the day. Now, on an overcast day, it would still be nice. But to get that kind of water that you want, yeah, there's Fiji. Can you zoom in a little more? Will it let you zoom in anymore? Yeah, there's Fiji. Those first two days, I and would by the way, get out you, to one of those islands I want, there. Well, I want to go to do. Fiji because they have fine artesian water in oh, bottles. I tell you. In plastic bottles. It's fine artesian water. Artesian water they couldn't say best. that if it wasn't true. Anyway, so that's, that's, well, that's a perfect picture right there. Oh, yeah, this one. That's the picture. Hey, look at that, though. All right? I just want to be there. I want to be there, too. I don't really want to be there with you, though, Eric. No. I want to be there with my wife. I, I, I want to be there. And, but I'm okay if you're in the next hut over, <laughs> like at the Pizza Hut. I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to go out to one of those small islands way off the coast and making sure the Milky Way is up. And the Milky Way will leave, be there. Leave, leave me out there for a couple of days. I'll leave you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, that's it. I, that's all mine. Now, I do want to give my list of p places that... Uh, now, these places I've been to... I'm interested about this. This is the list of places that are surprisingly bad, right? And not surprisingly bad, but they're places that you would say, oh, they're awesome. But I, I don't see a lot of awesome pictures coming out of there. And I wasn't able to get any awesome pictures myself. Like when I think of beautiful pictures and beautiful places, all kinds of, you know, places pop in my mind. But I've seen good pictures come from here, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to any of these places. I mean, I would go back to them to enjoy the town, the city. I would not go there okay. yeah, I got for you. photography. The first one, a lot of people are going to disagree with, but there's only two shots there. Amsterdam. You know, it's a very nice town. Okay. Nice people. The Dutch are very nice. They're very tall. Frank Duerhoff's there. I love going to see Frank. I've been to Amsterdam a number of times. There is the picture of the bikes on the canal. There's that one little bridge that mm -hmm. everybody takes. Yep. That's pretty much it. With the reflections. With the reflections. You just don't see that many good... I'm sorry. You just don't see many good pictures coming out of Amsterdam. You don't see bad pictures. It's not a bad place. But if somebody said, Scott, where should I go? Should I go to Amsterdam? I would go, yeah, do not. Or go get that Even one though shot. Amsterdam is a very interesting city to visit. Like uh -huh. there's great museums and there's great shopping. There's great food. There's great people. It's an interesting... It's not a photographically awesome place. And it's, it's very busy. Like, it's hard to get that one lone bike because there's 100 bikes all around it. It's just, right. like, it's, it's... So you have to work a lot. Right. So that's, that's one. Next, this is a tough city. And I love this country. I love the people. I love the food. I love everything but shooting in Athens. Athens, Greece is a hard place to make a great shot. Now you can go to the Acropolis and shoot, and it's got scaffolding all around it, and it's hard to get a good, you so you're taking out the scaffolding and stuff. And stuff yeah. I, I've just, I've been there a number of times. I worked in Greece when I was younger. I don't have any good shots. I don't see like shots of Athens where I go, oh, well. Now, that doesn't mean that somebody hasn't made good shots there, 
But I would not recommend to a friend, now, I would recommend to a friend to land in Athens, spend a few days enjoying Athens, but when you're ready to go, I'm going to jump to the next one on my list, go to, this is a go-to, go to Santorini, the island of Santorini. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, now, I, I did the, I did your right theory, but when I go to 500 PS and type in Athens, Greece, it's kind of, it's okay. Yeah, they're just, there's nothing, there's nothing really that jumps yeah. out at you. They're okay. Right. Now, I know if I went Santorini, you're going to see some beautiful, different shots. Yes. Like that, there's some cool stuff here. Yeah. Santorini right. is a very interesting. It's up on the top of an island. Well, and it's also one of those things where it's got the, the man-made blends right and, into and the Eric, cliffs. The and... hotels in Santorini with these private pools overlooking the edge. The hotels are just amazing. And so got anyway, very, uh, different with the colors and stuff like that. Hey, dude, so. does that my picture go up a little bit? Click on the go down. One over. Oh no, I guess it's not. Okay, I have a picture just like that when I, I was there on a cruise ship, and my my ship was like right there. That's a classic place to shoot. When there's more ships, my I only had one ship. Okay, there you go. But anyway, the long and short of it is. There are wonderful places to shoot in Greece. I don't really think Athens is one of them. All right, okay. next. This is going to be a surprising one because it's such a great city. I love the experience of being there. I was there with my best friend, Terry White, and so we, we had a wonderful experience there, and we didn't come back with crap for shots. We did go to a church, and we got some nice shots there. But overall, I wouldn't tell somebody to go to Copenhagen. Denmark, great. Copenhagen has one of the best amusement parks. It has the amusement park that inspired Tivoli Gardens, that inspired mm -hmm. Walt Disney to create Disney World. And it is, a, it is one of the coolest amusement parks I've ever been to. It's classic. It's amazing. It's, it's a place lost in time. So go to the amusement park. Go to the shopping. Go, to, go shoot the picture of the Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen, which is kind of boring looking. But, and then maybe I, I, go over to Melmo. Yeah. And the, and, well, no, that's Denmark. Malmo is from Sweden. Malmo is across yeah. the bridge from Sweden. Yeah. So, uh, that's what I'm saying. You can go over there and yeah, see the building. I, I just, I just, <laughs> I don't see a lot of great pictures coming out of there. I don't see anybody going, oh, God, you know where I want to go? Copenhagen. Great place to visit, though. Yep. I have two more. This next one, this is one that's going to make people lose their mind. But I'm telling you, I see very, very few good photos coming out of either Barcelona or Madrid. Now, Spain's a beautiful country. My mother was born in Madrid. I've been to Madrid. I've been to Barcelona numerous times. I've spoken at conferences in Spain. Uh, and there are great seaside towns like Siches and, and outside of Barcelona. I, I spent my 50th birthday in Barcelona, uh, just outside of Barcelona. And Spanish people are great. And I can speak a little Spanish, which is nice. Not much, but enough to order food. But Barcelona, besides being, you, you have to watch all of your gear because it's like this run and grab and steal your gear capital of the world. It's, I just don't see a lot of great pictures coming out of there. It's just, no. now there's really neat places like, you know, uh, La Sagrada Familia. Uh-oh. Um, you lost my mic? I guess I've lost your mic, so. I'll go to the third mic on the set. Here we go. This is the third mic. It's the third mic in one show. They're dropping like flies. They're dropping like flies. I feel like I'm at a press conference. All right, so, the, but you were talking about like, so Madrid, Barcelona. Madrid, Barcelona. Yeah. I mean, it's. I don't it's, see a lot of good pictures coming out of there. They're great yeah. places to travel to. Insane food. There's the La Sagrada Familia Church that will never, ever, ever be done right? Designed by Gaudi. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And it's surrounded by construction cranes. You're never going to get a good shot of it unless you're committed to Photoshop and removing cranes and spending a lot of time doing it. It's an incredible church to see. But outside of seeing inside pictures of that church, because the outside's a mess and the inside semi-mess, I just, I know I hate to say that, but I wouldn't tell a friend. I would straight up say, you know what? You want to shoot some great travel photos? Go to Barcelona. I wouldn't say it. Wouldn't do it. Okay. I so. would say, do you want to go on a great vacation? 
and have maybe your purse stolen, go to Barcelona. <laughs> no? no? All right. Last so one. So what's your last one? The last one is a town I absolutely loved. Went through with my family recently. We had, a, not super recently, but last year. Had a great trip. It is an incredible city. It's not much to photograph. Tokyo. Yeah. Tokyo is the cleanest, most well-run, efficient, yummy, awesome place filled with awesome people and semi-awesome shots. If you go to 500px, all you're going to see that is the good shot is the shot when you leave Tokyo and get Mount Fuji in the background. It's, the, it's like when I tell Eric, when you go to Valensol, you're going to get that one yeah, shot. Yeah, you're going to get that one shot. But look at this. These aren't awesome shots. No. And it's, it's an awesome well, place. Well, so that's what the only thing is. It, I have seen a lot of stuff. I type in Mount Fuji. I've seen a lot of stuff right, from Mount, Mount Fuji. Fuji is not in Tokyo. Yeah. It's no, way outside. Yeah. But yeah, it's You're okay. right. But it's look just... At, yeah. I mean, this is 500 PX. You should be seeing photos that knock your socks off. And instead you go... I guess they lost your mic again. I don't know what's going on. So, anyways. Yeah, I mean, you can see here. Tokyo is It's kind of just... Blah, you know, but I bet, yeah, if we go up here and type in like Mount uh, Fuji, oh, if I can spell Mount Fuji. You want the picture with the entrance? Yeah, that's right there. It is. There's the classic picture. Go up. That is the classic picture right there. That's it. That's the yep. one everybody goes for. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, that's where, you know, you just got to go. Sometimes it is with photography, just finding those places but that's and not knowing where to go. That is so, not in Tokyo. Yeah. Um, all right, so we got, to go, we got winners? Yeah. yeah. Um, where, where do we just have one winner? No, we see the four. Okay, no, I see them. Never mind, never mind. I got them highlighted here. I'm, I'm losing it. So uh, we're, we got some winners here. So we got uh, Snowkeeper. Uh, is won the Slick Pick uh, account. So uh, just reach out to or us at um, gridprize at kelby1.com uh, via email and we'll get you set up. Um, Juta is won uh, the book. Uh, so she said we'd love the book. So we got that. And then uh, Timothy W. Oliver uh, would like the goosenecks. So you won the goosenecks. And then. Um, Hey, Timothy says he's said, getting up early Yeah, Timothy said, webcast. getting up early next week for the webcast. So there you go. Um, and then uh, Carol R. is saying Lytra, please. So won the Lytra book. Or Lytra Light. Lytra Light. Yeah, Lytra Light. Not like the book. But, um, and then everybody who watches The Grid is a winner because you all can get 50% off a Slick Pick uh, account over at www.slickpick.com forward slash Kelby1 and you get 50% off. Uh, and again, if you won one of those prizes, just email us at gridprize at kelby1.com. Christina will verify all your information and we'll send it off to you. There you go. I don't know if my mic's working. I don't think it is because they were going to get you a new one and then uh, I haven't seen anybody bring one over yet. So uh, I think that's where we're at. We're just, this, this is the end of the show and uh, we will uh, <laughs> see you guys next week. Uh, hopefully by then we'll have three working mics instead of no working mics. Uh, I think that the uh, the gremlins got in the system there. So uh, we will see you guys next week. And if you're Kelby One members, don't forget we got that webcast coming next week at 11 a.m. So we'll see y'all next week here on the grid. <laughs>